Hi, everybody, and welcome to a senior citizen punting. God, that's fun to say. A senior citizen punting, underground mole people wrestling, tone deaf promoting episode of the Brothers of Discussion. We're going to talk everything from the manifestation of Sister Abigail, the return of wrestlers who were canceled. Well, not for very long. Matt. We're also going to talk about Dominic Mysterio getting fitted for a jetpack all the way to the moon. The Wednesday Night Wars, <laughs> Matt, and so much more. Another spicy week of wrestling. Literally, uh, this was microwave nachos, which a little extra cheese and a little taco sauce goes a long way on microwave nachos. Matt, how are you? Gotta love the thousand packets you get at a Taco Bell drive through Just uh, yeah. quick, we have an entire drawer in our refrigerator that's devoted to... We have a lot of, yeah, we have that, and then White Castle Honey Mustard, which is really good. Oh. Huh. Like, if you want a low-cal snack while you're just, you know, playing video games, just crack open a White Castle Honey Mustard and suck on one of those like a Capri Sun. It's really good. I, I actually had an old dude <laughs> once at, uh, when I worked at the credit union in Dearborn. Uh, he told me that he takes, he goes up to the cashiers at McDonald's and says, how many honey packets can you give me? And, you know, considering he's the only human who's ever asked that, they probably go, I don't know, as many as you want. And uh, he keeps a bunch of honey packets in his pocket, and he says then he has natural energy instead of using energy drinks or coffee, which I would argue is pretty natural, uh, to, to energize himself throughout the day. So he says he, you know, picture me working at a credit he's union. He's just doing honey he's shots? Man. Yeah, yeah. No, he does honey dabs. He takes his finger, swirls it around in the little honey cup for McDonald's, and eh, energy. Anyways, uh. <laughs> I could use one of those today. I, I actually, for the first time in a long time, took a nap in the middle of the day. It's, uh, it's pretty nice. An it's, underrated experience. Yeah. Midday I, naps feel really good. I think it was because of heat stroke from putting together my patio. Uh, I've been updating Ooh. everybody online, and uh, my wife and I keep thinking, like, this, okay, well, this is the day we're going to work on it and finish it. And uh, This is the day, honey. And we don't. <laughs> yep. Except if I did that after we came inside, standing in the sun in 80-degree heat, I probably wouldn't be here right now. Anyways, um... You got to check out everything Brothers of Discussion at BODpodcast.com, Brothers of Discussion.com. Find us on Twitter at BOD Podcast. Find us on Instagram with a joint account that goes both uh, Detroit Red Wings hockey for our other podcast and pro wrestling. It's Brothers underscore Hockey I is underscore back. Discussion. Hockey is back. And uh, you can find that show at BOD Hockey. Uh, that's where we uh, provide our Red Wings thoughts for the Hockey Podcast Network. Oh, yeah, good. If, you're, if you feel. If you feel like, uh, you know, Monday Night Raw is a little long, um, there was a five-overtime hockey game the other day, and somehow that still felt shorter than an episode of Monday Night Raw. I, you know... I had a lot of fun watching that. Real quick, we'll probably talk about it this weekend, but yeah. I'm all about that. I, I, like, I loved it. NHL yeah. playoffs is, like, that's what gives me strength. I don't need a honey cup. I need... <laughs> I need NHL Stanley Cup playoffs. Uh, it, it really is. I think it is the best playoffs of all sports, but unfortunately, it's the worst marketed sport, so nobody cares. It really is. Um, um, all right. Yeah. So, am I looking at the right <laughs> notes? I'm looking at uh, your little blurb from last week. Uh-oh, yeah, uh, go to episode 143. I, that was the thing I wrote. I, oh, that's see, really I found out I have to write another little blurb because yours are too long. I've been stealing what you do and just putting it as like our Google thing, but it does not track on Google. Google does not know how to use... Uh, it wouldn't know how to use the word manifestation. It'd be like, nobody's searching manifestation. Get the manifestation out of here. That's my Rick and Morty bad improv <laughs> <laughs> impression. No, All no, right. That was real good. <laughs> That's another one. That was real good, yeah. Um, okay, so let's talk pro wrestling. It's enough of our pre-show banter. Um, oh, no, my Preamble. connection is, is yeah. unstable. Yeah, right, what do you got? Uh, what do we have? The Raw Underground? You want to go over, oh, no. what, week number two? 
Yeah, I guess, uh, you know, I think uh, quite a few of us were pretty critical of it last week. Um, Because it it, honestly, in theory, it does seem like kind of a cool idea, Uh, especially to kind of reboot some people who've been on the peripheral and they, you know, maybe being a a wrestler isn't quite, um, you know, their skill set. Looking at you, Baba Tunde. I'm looking at you, Viking Raiders. Cause, uh, man, your mic work has really been out there. You've been doing all the stuff FTR walked away from WWE from. Um, but uh, watching Eric and Ivar hammer people in that weird ropeless ring, and part of the criticism was that there were dancing girls on the side, like it was a like Vegas showgirls or something. Uh, like we were. Just yeah. turning back the clock, you know, back to the Attitude Era. And uh, I think a lot of people uh, had a big grumpy in their pants. I was one of them. And uh, now they're letting the women fight. So, Matt, you know, if they're going to let Shayna Baszler just beat the crap out of people in there, uh, I'm all on board. I like yeah, it. I think, I think it's a definite upgrade from the first week. And I, I still, yeah, I think last week we said it was an opportunity to let guys build their character and, uh, you know, give themselves a, a brand new, uh, how do you want to say it? Like, it, it's it's not about jumping up in the main roster. Um, I don't know. It's not it's not like an intercontinental championship. It's it's similar to that vein, right? Because you could you could become the 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 front runner in Raw Underground. It's it's another thing to fight for. We don't have to worry about a title right now. Uh, you can let guys shine in a completely different way. And like I, the names uh, Eric and Ivar, th- those are the two guys I think are really going to benefit from this. Uh, and and Shayna and and like you said. Um, Having Shayna Baszler go go up there and just destroy everybody that was in the room was fantastic. And we talk about so many different things on both of our podcasts where um, there are social issues that we need to go over. And we say, hopefully it'll be better the next week. I think it's fine if we also do that for our pro wrestling uh, television that we consume. And I think Underground was pretty good last week. And it was even better this week. Uh, I think they made the changes that we were complaining about. You really look like EC3 right now. Like, the angle you have, the furrow brow, the, uh, like, your jawline, right? You really look like EC3, just, like, with the... Uh... Yeah, see, you see it. You're, like... Now I'm you're looking pushing at it. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, everybody, if you're not watching on YouTube, like, you just missed Mike doing a, a great accidental EC3 facial impression. Um yeah. But yeah, put me on I'm a projector excited. and I can scare the moose. Um, I think, <laughs> yeah, I'm excited uh, for week three. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I mean, it's just a reboot for people who are more violent, who, who aren't, uh, you know, the sports entertainers. Uh, I, I could kind of see the positives. It's, it's getting there. It deserves some criticism in, in week one, and it got better week two. And week three, who knows what's in store? Uh, maybe, uh, you know, Marina Shafir will, and Justin and Duke will suddenly have jobs again. Who knows? Anything Ooh. could happen in the Raw Underground. Um, <laughs> I like you know, uh, that. That should be Shane's next sign up. <laughs> who knows? Anything goes in Raw Underground. <laughs> signed um, all these people. One, man, let's do this. Uh, one thing that you desperately want to see. I have one ready to go in the can. One thing you desperately want to see in Raw Underground. Go. Or do you want me to do mine first? Um... Something I desperately want to see in Raw Underground. I wonder. It, it's hard. It's hard to put a finger on. I think off the top of your head, because I, I go to guys that are popular because they're pro wrestlers. Um, because I, I think it might be interesting to see like a Kevin Owens in there. I feel like he could rough people up. But I, you know, honestly, it's got to be Brock Lesnar. Like if he is up for it and they have the money. I think he's got to go in there and just destroy Just some actually fight Samoa Joe. Yeah. Let's just see what really happens in there. Yeah. But then I also want to see Dolph fight Braun and Dolph win, and then never wrestle again. <laughs> 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 um, what I wanted to see is, because one of my favorite things is watching Botchmania, and every time Shane McMahon is in wow. physical combat, and those uh, marshmallow punches he throws at people, oh, I'd love to see him have to battle in the underground. Oh, that would be great. Uh, I, I love like that Shane versus Brock. I love that every wrestling program does that, 
and you know, including anything that Jim Cornette has ever been involved in. And yeah. he makes it his life's like mission to show everybody every time AEW puts marshmallow punches on television. <laughs> He's, I mean, it's pretty everybody wide. Everybody does it. I, yeah, I don't understand. Guilty. Yeah, like, I don't know why he highlights it every time. Uh, Jim Cornette, Jesus. And, and that that's another thing we should talk about. Um, it's not on our notes, <laughs> but uh, if we have time, we yeah. should probably touch on the feud between Jericho and Cornette because I've now decided, um, I don't know, I... I, I can't get on Jericho's side anymore after he threw that concert. And then he's like, well, we were half capacity and we told people to wear masks. People aren't wearing masks. Everybody's like right next to each other. So half capacity doesn't mean anything. Uh, yeah, was... we were only all in the front. That the, the, <laughs> ep, the, the back half was empty. So, uh, Matt, let's uh, let's get some a little little rough out of the way. So we, we did Raw Underground. Let's take to the skies. Matt? Flying through the air, zipping around from cloud to cloud, is the Scorpio Sky already? No, we're talking the offspring of Rey Mysterio. My God, uh, Matt, I don't think the Ghostbusters had proton packs as powerful. This guy is rocketing into the sun. He just, he just, uh, he leaped over Achilles, uh, but he has perfect tendons. The guy is this... is really going to the moon. This this is good. This should be a good soundbite for the episode. But when I re- when I read in your notes that he's getting fitted for a jetpack, I went back to the show notes of Monday Night Raw and I went, "Did I miss some- what? He's ge- <laughs> he's getting a jetpack? What? Yeah. Like Come I've on, never man. seen him. I've never seen him get beat up with a kendo stick. I I didn't know that there was a segment I missed where Ray is like, Dominic, come here." I got this joke. Dominic, come here. 619. Booyaka, booyaka. We're going to put you in a jetpack. That was a pretty good Rey Mysterio with no practice. I'm going to go ahead and pat myself I, on the back for that. I thought mine was better. Yours was like a twinge to, like, you You were like, I'll just throw in some extra 619. I, I think was people just... know, Dominic, that it is me, your father, Rey Mysterio. Was that was that enough little... throwing in all his uh, his, you, his his favorite pull, words there? Pull back on the six one nine. I think he he's definitely just got like a like a it's a higher pitched like Batman gargle, you know? Like he's uh, I'm, I'm Rey Mysterio. Hey, hmm. <laughs> I didn't have a line. That was uh, that one was not as good. Hey. Was objectively worse. Hey, that was objectively hey. worse. Uh, we're gonna have to put a poll online and see which one was better there. But uh, I'm, Matt I'm Dominic, so oh my god, uh, Dominic found a way to get over, it, and all you had to do was let Spuddy beat the shit out of him. Um, Matt, you had a really good line about what his body looked like. What did you say? Oh, uh, yeah, it looks like when uh, you forget you have the bagel setting uh, available on your toaster. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it was pretty rough, and i got to be honest, I-, I don't think I need to see Dominic beating up uh, the guy who defeated Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 31. I don't really need to see that, um, but I do think that if you want to get Dominic over uh just do what you did monday because i i think a lot of people were like damn you know i you know i've i've watched a lot of wrestling i've said you know maybe i'll go to wrestling school one of these weekends you know (laughs) maybe i'll text uh uh tyler breeze and see if he'll take me on for six weeks and i'll give him five grand to learn how to wrestle and dominic's like no i really want to wrestle and then they beat the living shit out of him at uh so I don't know if I have that. I don't know if I have that level of commitment to want to wrestle as bad as Dominic. Just taking a cue from David Arquette with uh, that new documentary that's coming out. I'm pretty. Oh, I gotta watch that. Yeah, it comes out SummerSlam weekend, so I will be. Let's see, it'll be my daughter's birthday on Saturday, so we'll probably celebrate her birthday by watching it that the day night after and getting ready oh. for SummerSlam. Bye, <laughs> right, baby. Your birthday's birthday tomorrow weekend. Yeah. Uh. Uh-huh. All right. Uh, yeah, Dominic's uh, on his way to the moon. What, else, what do we? Are we ready to talk shitty things? No, let's talk another thing, and then we'll talk shitty things. Yeah, let's um, talk another nice thing. The 
WWE has added some programming to the network. Uh, we have Evolve, WXW, Progress, Insane Championship Wrestling. And then we have... Um, what do we... Oh, no, that's it. Yeah. Uh, Evolve, WXW, Progress, and Insane Championship Wrestling. All coming to the WWE Network. Um, good news, I think, uh, for anybody that wants to be woke in the wrestling scene. Uh, for anybody who has that time. Uh, unfortunately, there's like other pro wrestling that uh, I want to watch that I don't have time to watch. Mike, how do, you, how do you feel about this? I think it's good for pro wrestling, and it's good for... Uh, you know, some of those wrestlers that are out there struggling. Uh... I mean, uh, I, I get why they're doing it. Um, you know, WWE's slowly been, you know, trying to get their tendrils into the, the independent wrestling community, yeah. um, you know, by promoting NXT the way they have and, you know, hiring a bunch of guys who've, you know, um, been earning their keep on the indie scene. And now they're going to be like, well, not only are we... You know, we're like the big papa. We're, we're the main event on Mondays and Fridays. Now, we also have the the independent scene. We have that market corner, too. So come on over. You want to watch some Evolve? You want to watch uh, a 17-year-old MJF eat a super kick from Seth Rollins before he was Seth Rollins? You come on down. Uh, I, I don't know how I'm going to have time for this. There's so much new wrestling that I don't make time for. Uh, you know, I still want to watch Impact in some capacity. Um, I want to see my uh, my my doppelganger in EC3. I want to see the Good Brothers. I want to see uh, I don't know if Luke Gallows is he's not really going by Luke Gallows. It's like LG69 or something. I want to see his weird little beard now. He's got a little knot in it, like a little goat. Um, I don't have time, so this is a cool idea. I think it's you know it might be fun to kind of go back in time and um, you know watch watch your favorite wrestlers with you know, shaving baby faces, just learning, learning the ropes, you know, but whew, just another thing to add to this that I, I don't know if I'm going to have time for it. Oh, and then uh, the last, uh, I actually wanted to use the weird beard to uh, transition into Velveteen Dream, but we got to mention what's going on behind me is uh, Randy Orton Randy. Ah, going after, going after Rick. Uh, <laughs> honestly, I, I've never loved Randy more. Yeah, oh, like I, I, I'm good. Never seeing Ric Flair on my TV again. Um, you know, he, he's not like, I don't know. He's, he's definitely not like a role model to have. I think when you look back on, on what he's done throughout his life, um, but I, and it's, it's not just like sheer hate. Like it's not like Hulk Hogan hate, but it, and it's not really hate. I, I just, I. You know, I'm I'm good. I I and I think uh, I think pro wrestling's better off if we just start to walk away from some of these old guys. Um, yeah, right? I I, uh, I really love Indiana Jones, but I don't need to see Harrison Ford at 85, like doing it again. Like those other three movies are really good. I'll just go back and watch those. I don't need to see him with Shia LaBeouf. Um, I, I think everybody's better off just leaving that in a time capsule yeah. that's where it should be that's when he was he's at his best new. yeah i don't need to see michael jordan trying to play basketball right now it's over go home i i can watch the the last dance on netflix whenever i want uh i'm good I, I don't need to see him you know lacing him up anymore so i thought Randy, um if we're gonna get two people over this week dominic on his jetpack and then randy Kicking his high, kicking his way to the top, much like a Vegas showgirl. Second time we've mentioned Vegas showgirls. Uh, Randy, just keep kicking old people. Uh, if you kick one more old person in the face, I am gonna buy a Randy Orton T-shirt. There, I said it. I said it. I will hunker down and buy a twenty-dollar Randy Orton T-shirt. You heard it here. Well, Mike, Rick took one in the nuts and then got. Kicked in the face, he's down, and we're also taking one in the nuts, Mike, with a couple different stories we have to talk about. Um, oh. Which one do you want to dive into first? Let's try to mix them together. So, sit have a get no. That's right, a good idea. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that one. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, is there much to uh, dissect? I, I don't know. Is Alexa, I, I would prefer Alexa Bliss is not Sister Abig Abigail. I just want. No, to I don't need that either. I do like yeah, the I tease of it. I do like the inclusion of her. 
uh, you know how, how often we you know get on the case and you know fill our pants with grumpies. That's the second time we've talked uh, Vegas showgirls and grumpies in the pants. Uh, we feel like grumpies because for some reason they don't either they don't want to or they don't allow the writers to like let's do a little self-referencing. You know something that happened a couple months back. Uh, so including Alexa Bliss uh, because of her affiliation with Braun Strowman. Uh, maybe making her sister Abigail because you know uh, uh, Bray Wyatt used to do that. It's just it just works. It's just a story that I'm you know intrigued to turn on SmackDown for and, and include another a bit of wrestling into my free time. And it's because of these these two people, uh, Bray and Alexa. Do you are are you sad if it turns out that she's in on it and she's working with Braun Strowman like do, do, do for this to work out do we need to see Alexa Bliss stay on the side of Bray Wyatt and the Fiend or is this some plot that uh Braun and, and Alexa have already worked together and and they're gonna they're gonna trick them out at SummerSlam because I'll you... be honest I'll say that's gonna that's gonna make me it's going to be like a fart in the wind. Yeah. Well, it's going to, it's, I mean, it's, it's already wet in my noodle uh, to think that, you know, she's eating a mandible claw from uh, Bray Wyatt. And I don't know if eating a, a mandible claw was part of the plan, but, um, I, you know, one of my favorite segments ever was Daniel Bryan briefly joining Bray Wyatt. And now we're going to get Alexa, another one of the great, you know, wrestling character actors uh, so I, I it just sounds like it's a good idea for everybody involved so i bravo to whichever writer got that approved in vince's writing room all right now the shitty stuff um i like what you said let's mix them together we have a tone deaf writing group of retribution oh and... man i forgot i thought you meant sammy and velveteen i forgot it was sammy and velveteen and retribution oh, okay. damn it well then let's get mike why is can you explain to the people why Retribution is such a terrible, Oh, well, I think uh, in the United States, sometimes uh, WWE does not really have a finger on the pulse of, uh, you know, maybe the best way to handle, um, you know, what's what, like the struggles of, you know, certain demographics. Um, we're in the middle of, people having so little to do they're actually being active in their community and trying to help out um our black brothers and sisters who are getting gunned down in the street by cops and what we've done is try to you know protest uh peacefully protest in the streets to try and you know spread the word get people involved and make change and there's been a, a radical you know uh, marketing play um especially with people um, kind of like subverting the group, sneaking in and exploiting this opportunity to loot so and riot. And so what people are doing is, oh, I see. Uh, this isn't a real movement. This is just rioters. So there's a, a huge distinction between peaceful protesting and rioting. Uh, Black Lives Matter is about peaceful protesting. It is not about rioting and destroying the community. So. WWE in there, um, not you know, not one of their first mistakes, won't be their last. Um, has decided <laughs> to create a faction uh, dedicated to looting and rioting. I just I can't think of a more appropriate word than tone deaf uh, for them to debut this now, um, especially with the way. Um, as people protest, as we're in an election year, as we get closer to November, um, the way it's going to get heavily politicized, um, you know, people's activism in the streets, um, you know, people trying to uh, openly be out there making a difference, being vocal. And for WWE to think now is a good time for us to create a faction where we're in a way glorifying rioting is 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 really really bizarre I, I i i don't know why they thought that this was a good time to push that we were already having weird instances with um you know uh ninjas and led by you know an asian person and all his cronies are clad in black and that wasn't enough now we have another group all clad in black you can't see their faces um so you can't identify them in a line which you know 
you know, it's a, a lot of what, you know, these riders are trying to do and, and not get caught by not only are they wearing a mask for COVID, they're trying to wear hoods, you can't identify them. And it just feels like WWE is very strangely using this as an opportunity to be, I don't know if they're building a heel faction, but their they're retribution, I, I just, I can't think of a, a, a thing that I, I want to end more. Uh, I, I, we gave Underground some grief because, you know, it, it kind of was taking the whole women's division back like 10 years, yeah. 15 years, 20 years. But this is something, you know, we're going to talk about WWE's bad timing in the next segment. This, I, I don't know how they're going to rescue this. This this sounds like something that needs to just be dropped. Just cold turkey. Just the way that they did um, that weird hacker who we thought was uh, Mustafa Ali. Just drop it. It it should not happen. Now, do we also drop Velveteen Dream? Um, I, I will say, like, what I've been posting on Twitter in regards to Dream being out there is there has been no acknowledgement of what's going on with Velveteen through their social media, through their website. There, there wasn't an announcement of like, we're going to, we're going to conduct a thorough investigation after said investigation. He's cleared. Uh, there are no charges. Uh, we have no reason to punish Velveteen. Like, None of that happened. He went off. T- he went off TV for months. Came back as like the big surprise for the main event on NXT. Um, and a little, you know, spoiler to uh, the uh, the Wednesday Night Wars segment. Uh, Dream, uh, thankfully, did not win, and Cameron Grimes did. But I, I just everything that happened afterwards. You see Finn Balor and Dream. So Dream's gonna have a prominent. Um, spot on, on NXT and I think a lot of this stuff is, is pre-taped so they probably already have it ready to go um Mike this one's bad uh for what I already mentioned and that, that they, there's there's no there's no accountability is the problem here and there's no accountability for the WWE they can do whatever they want it's it's not like with the NFL I mean um we've seen the Supreme Court get involved with the NFL uh, the Supreme Court does not care what the WWE does. Um, so, and things that, that sort of relate in, in this uh, the same vein of um, sexual harassment and predatory cases. Um, I mean, it just kind of looks like it's in WWE's hands. And if there was actual evidence, then WWE washes their hands and Dream has to go to court or whatever. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not one to speak as if I know the goings on uh, of uh, what the legalities would be for, for dream and all of these accusations. But um, so I'm not an expert in that realm, but I am an expert in the idea that, uh, you know, the, the WWE is, is, uh, is doing a great injustice to us as viewers by just throwing them back on the air and not saying anything was cleared, not acknowledging the fact that uh, there's going to be a lot of people upset that he just is back on TV um, I think there's a lot of ways to unpack this, and some are just, he, you know, we, we, it's hard to find proof, but with multiple accusations on Dream, maybe we just cross, you know, that's it. Dream had a shot, and he kind of fudged it up, uh, but, you know, even, even in, outside of that realm, there, there was no acknowledgement. There was just this pulling him off TV and putting him back on. And treating it like, oh boy, aren't, isn't everybody excited that Velveteen Dream is back on TV? Which, um, speaking of, of like tone deaf, uh, that really backfired last night if you were following on Twitter. But, um, Mike, you wanted to compare it to Sammy. Uh, Sammy Guevara and, and AEW, which I also felt was not handled in the best no, way. But um... I think... No, it's just weird. Uh, I, I, the the return of Velveteen Dream. I, I don't know if anybody was uh, like excited or or happy about it yesterday because, like you said, it doesn't feel like there's accountability. It doesn't feel like the issues were ever really addressed publicly. I don't. You know, it's not like do they really owe us the fans something? Well, as the people buying T-shirts and buying tickets, uh, I I would like a little confirmation, a little affirmation that you know the guy I'm supporting is uh, not right. a pedophile. Um, 
I, I think people are also a little, should be a little curious about uh, WWE's stance with this whole thing. And what it is clearly an issue with how big of an influence you are on the roster. If you are Travis Banks or Jack Gallagher, you are immediately released. Uh, if you are Joe Coffey, you get suspended. If you are Velveteen Dream, you're just off TV for a while. So it's definitely like you can tell who's a priority and who they would, you know, per, you know, prefer to have legal backing for. I, I don't know if all the cases are identical. You know, you and I don't know that. But if we're going to compare it to Sammy Guevara, uh, first off, every time I see those tired arguments about, well, AEW doesn't care about, you know, who, the AEW guy doing something bad, but they only care about WWE. That's not what this show is. We want both of those people held accountable in all in all areas. Sammy's is different, though, because he actually did come forward publicly. He actually was able to talk to Sasha Banks uh, for his idiotic comment. Um, he got it addressed. It doesn't mean it was right, but, I, you know, the cancel culture is just like so – listen, it's not saying that what he did was okay, but I don't know if we can just end a guy's career for some stupid idiotic comment especially if they're willing to change, reach out and do something and make themselves and other people around them better. So cool. Just do that. It's not forgiven. It's something that will probably prevent me from buying a t-shirt, but you know, that's, that's, that's long short of it. So with Sammy, he did all that. He's out in the, you know, uh, public arena. He actually reached out, you know, to the person that he, you know, probably hurt and embarrassed. Like why, why would you think this is ever okay? Um, it didn't quite get her blessing and she doesn't deserve to give him a blessing, but she just basically said, you know, more or less, you're a fucking idiot. Just don't say stuff like that again. Cause you don't realize, you know, it sucks at the surface level, but there's so much like ingrained, um, like sexism. There's so much ingrained, like, um, kind of like looming power and like threat for, you know, stuff like that, that was like normalized for such a long time. So for her to even have, you know, maybe have said something back in the past would have, you know, just, you know, gotten eye rolls or people would have just said, ah, he's just joking. So it kind of makes you feel like you're in a, a powerless, you know, situation by yourself. So there's, there's so much more going on than just the dumb comment. So it seems like Sammy, you know, was a young idiot kid and now he's trying to fix it. I just, we, we haven't gotten that opportunity with Velveteen. Um, it just seems like it's kind of swept under the rug and they're just hoping that we forgot. In some capacity, that has to be why they didn't let him win. It was kind of that Triple H mantra of, you know, we get, a, um, uh, we get to test out our, our target audience every week and see if we're doing something good. So they just, you know, very slowly kind of put him in the water to kind of see how people reacted. So the first episode back, I think there was a lot of backlash online, but I'm kind of curious to see what they do with him next week. I, I would be surprised if he, he got, you know, I know that they're they're hinting at the Finn Balor battle, but I, I, don't, I don't know if he's going to be getting a good spot on the card. Not, not right now. Well, now is a good time as any, because that'll be in our Wednesday Night Wars for next week. Uh, hopefully doesn't make it uh make the cut of our top three but uh mike let's jump into jump back into pro wrestling talk uh, we gotta turn it around we've yep. got our top three moments for both shows that uh, we rank every week in the wednesday night wars um yeah let's, uh i don't know uh we we like to jump in and kind of talk like uh like from a macro level of, of how we felt about both the shows uh I, I definitely am fine saying NXT lost this week. It's goddamn, uh, that was rough. Um, I'm, I'm not one for contract signings. I'm not one for reminders that one of the most decorated NXT superstars could be going down to an NFL punter. Not, not a lineman, not a linebacker, not even a quarterback. Not former uh, University of Texas defensive tackle Keith Lee. Uh, a punter. Yep. Uh, and, and then uh, the rest of the show is just kind of sprinkled with some okay matches. Uh, so overall, this week we're giving the rub to C-. Iggy Dub. 
Maybe a D plus. D plus for NXT. This Oof. Week. I'm gonna go uh, a B minus for AEW. Um, there was some, uh, as Stone Cold likes to say, there's some good matches. There's some nice matches. There's good and nice things happening. Um, we we propelled a couple the hot of hot takes. Yeah, thanks, Stone Cold. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, there's a few really uh, just noticeable drops. Uh, one of them being. Whoops, uh, we're going to celebrate tag teams and then uh, also promote a women's tag team tournament and not have any of the women Tune in. Ah. Uh, so, um, it's, it's, it's just, uh, you know, we're really going to celebrate tag team wrestling. Uh, we got a great field of women in the tournament, but uh, you're not going to see them on the same night because Rock and Roll Express is coming out to get a pile driver from FTR. Oh, no! Yay! I don't know who that was for. Uh, I, I, don't need to, I don't need to see them uh, ever again. Wind the clock back to my conversation about Ric Flair being off my TV. Randy, if you can parachute into <laughs> AEW for one night and one night only. <sighs> it's all that's just, a, I, just a one-night rental. That's all I want. That's why the WWE needs to open up their contracts and let these guys just bounce around. So Randy Orton can just kick the shit out of any old man that's on my TV too long. All right. Um, Mike, <laughs> I'll, I'll go first since my show super sucks. Yeah, mine, um, mine had high points. I'll say AEW won this week. Besides the, the ratings war, which no one gives a shit about unless you're a moron. All right, go ahead, man. Number, moment number three from NXT. All right, let's go. Only because I, I like the idea of uh, Santos Escobar getting some wins, and I, I don't like Tyler Breeze losing, but um, the Phantasma faction, I think, needs to, to put some wins under its belt. Um, I think that they're bigger than the Cruiserweight title, or I think they could be. So I, I'm going to put this on there to avoid putting... Um, talking about stupid velveteen dream being on my tv uh as well so i'm doing my best not to put that in my top three uh because i i am kind of happy that came from Brian won but uh yeah g give me i mean give me a quick match give me a match that's gonna help move up a faction but overall you know i can't i don't think i can say enough this show was rough uh so yeah this is my number three and you might be thinking man what about these other segments. I, I mean, overall, it was just like um, there was there wasn't a high peak in the show. You know, like I I think it was pretty flat and it had like a bump. So you could say like you you jumble everything into a curve and the curve was so slight. If if we were talking like a like a statistical way to represent a, a pro wrestling show, yeah. so I'm gonna try and pick things that made it in this bump, but. It all pretty much was flat, so I I, I can throw anything into that bump. Um, so for for this, I as I go week to week, I, I like to pick things that I, I I think just make me happy because they're like some of my favorite wrestlers. But I'm a huge fan of the Phantasma faction. I want Santos Escobar to do well, get them victories, get them Ws, uh, even though the match kind of sucked. But at, at least now they're building up like a, a stronger feud too between. Um, Freeze Fandango and uh, and the Fantas the Phantasma faction. I, I can't remember what it's called, but that, that's that's what we're gonna call it for the for this for the sake of this segment. Yeah, everybody likes alliteration. Fantasma and friends. Um, man, moment number three from Oh Elite Wrestling. Um, I think it's just because one of our criteria when we you know pick pick uh, the segments that were the best of the week. You got to be good in the moment, right? And then you got to propel the story forward. So as much as it angered me to see that Rock and Roll Express was eating up valuable TV time, uh, when you consider that AEW, even with the picture in picture, is still only about an hour and a half, maybe. Um, it was FTR, FTR beating up the Rock and Roll Express. Oh, it felt so good to watch. Um, there's, a, <laughs> there's a lot of ass kissing from the Bucks, um, Young Bucks to uh, uh, Rock and Roll. Um, Matt Jackson did his best to like name drop. Um, my God, I can't believe the name. I'm just realizing what he did. Um, <laughs> one of the tech teams he dropped 
without uh, name dropped without saying their full name because he was trying to uh, you know not name WWE people. He said Jeff and Matt, fine, but he also said this week Sean and Marty. There had to be two other legends you could have picked. Literally, any other two legends this week. There, there had to be somebody else you could have picked. Um, uh, for anybody who has been in a bubble, uh, Marty Jannetty kind of woke up last week and confessed to murder and then took it back and said he just disappeared a guy. He uh, disappeared a guy. So... He's fine. Matt Jackson, the week after that occurs, says, man, what a hero Marty is. Um, if only he met Doc Brown and Marty McFly, but he met the guy who disappeared a guy. Um, but, Matt, the positives of this segment is that FTR uh, didn't DDT, didn't punch an old man. They piled, piled drove him, piled drived him. Piled drove, I like piled drove him uh, into the mat. Um, and after some chaos ensued, uh, my beloved... Hangman Page uh, ran out with Omega to kind of whoa whoa what's what's everybody doing? But Hangman was holding a glass of scotch, so it was kind of funny to see him kind of nurse it on his way. Like Omega made a sprint to the ring, and the Hangman was just kind of like, "Easy does it, man. Easy does it. I gotta watch it. Watch a drink." So he he did a good job. I don't think he dropped one one iota of alcohol. So that's moment number three. Old people getting what they deserve. How many times do you have to teach this lesson, old man? Matt, call it number two from NXT. Uh, Bronson Reed and Damian Priest, I think, will we'll take the number two spot. The only thing that scares me is uh, NXT and WWE's 50-50 booking. Um, I mean, it's a thing that happens in pro wrestling. I shouldn't just put it on them. But uh, Damian Priest taking the loss makes me worry that he's going to get the win at TakeOver. Um, is it his time? I don't know. Like... When you go back and look at the catalog for NXT, pretty sure we've been watching Damian Priest for like two fucking years. Um, but <laughs> I still don't get excited for him. So fix that before we just say maybe the title will work. Um, I mean, Bronson Reed, I, I would be more excited to, to get the victory at TakeOver 30. But uh, here we are. And, and we're talking about that, uh, that ladder match. Uh, so... You know, it was a, it was a better segment on the show, uh, but it still causes me pain because it makes me worry Damien Priest is going to win. Mike, you're number two. Uh, believe me, every time Orange Cassidy's on TV, I want him on my list. He did not make it this week because of the really awful finish that he had with Jericho, where uh, I forgot the verbiage they they called that pin, uh, but Jericho airmailed a Judas effect. Um, it looked like Orange was going for a Russian leg sweep. And then they both fell backwards, and then Cassidy just lifted one of Jericho's legs, and then it was over. And so Orange was saved from having to give Chris $7,000 in an obligation match. Matt, bummer number two. Uh, it feels like these guys never have a bad match. It was Paige and Omega. Paige getting mentioned twice uh, in one show. Um, they did battle with Jurassic Express. Um, you know. It's just another example of four guys who are really good at their job. And we got to see Omega be a bad guy again because he pummeled that little Marco stunt, uh, sent him flying. Um, Omega was throwing those uh, snapdragon suplexes left and right. Um, it still amazes me with, you know, how many guys use a top rope suicida. You know, we got the super kick parties. Um, everybody uses a spear. I honestly can't think of anyone else in – like WWE or AEW, who uses a not just a dragon suplex, but a snapdragon. Um, so it really is a treat every time, and it's just a nice reminder of Omega's um, like physical uh, dexterity and creativity um, offensively when he's wrestling professionally. Um, so it's a treat to watch, and uh, the right team went over. It's it's not time for Paige and Omega to break up. Uh, probably not until you know. Uh, the next AEW pay-per-view and FTR finally topples him. Matt, your dishonorable mention. Now, it sounds like there's quite a few contenders for dishonorable mention on NXT, but you got to pick just one. I mean, we've already mentioned one, so I'll, I'll mention the other, and it was the reminder that uh, Adam Cole could be going down to Pat McAfee. 
Um, I mean, this is a guy who got to get Pat over. Got to get him over. We're selling some McAfee T-shirts, man. He's a content creator, and he doesn't have the time to show up to NXT to do a promo with Adam Cole, so they have to do an invite, and then he'll be on next week. Adam Cole doing a promo about him fighting Pat. Like, a a week ago, I was like, all right, a punt to the head. Let's just have this match, and, and Adam Cole will win. But... I mean, this already is getting Adam Cole all worked up. I I don't I don't like where this is going. This this makes it look like I got it. First it. of all, <clears throat> speaking of tone deaf, I it feels like the WWE thinks we're going to be rooting for Pat McAfee. I I don't even know Ooh, if the people that work for Pat McAfee close. are going to be rooting for Pat McAfee. He uh. is the biggest. One of the biggest douchebags in like sports media, I think I've ever heard. Like a guy so undeserving of his placement, his job, his recognition. Uh, the people that think he's funny just it blows my mind because he does nothing. He's he is a, a YouTuber who reacts to you know ASMR videos. Like that's that's what he is, and maybe perfect timing for. Uh, you know, the world and, and how we consume our content. Maybe that's perfect timing. But this guy is the asshole to end all assholes. I, I just... He is the heel. Fuck him. God damn, it, just don't remind me that there's a possibility Cole's gonna before, lose. Before we move away from your dishonorable mention, you have to pick one. McAfee, Penny, Adam Cole, baby. Dominic Mysterio... Pinning Seth Rollins. Which one do you pick? Uh, absolutely Dominic pinning Seth Rollins. There's totally a way to make that work. <laughs> Pat McAfee pinning the most decorated <laughs> NXT superstar. Longest reigning NXT champion. I mean, come on. Uh, the leader of the Undisputed Era. The Undisputed Era would have to like dissolve at that point. I don't know what ha- I don't know if Vince was like watching some Adam Cole promos. Hey, 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 and you know another thing, uh, you know we got Roddy Strong. Hey, and another thing, boys and girls, I don't know if he like hates that. And, and another thing, I, I don't know what it is, but uh, I'm scared for Adam Cole's future. Uh, <laughs> Matt, that brings us all the way down to number one from NXT, the number one moment this week. So. I could pick Keith Lee's face blowing up or even the match of Karrion Cross des- destroying our beloved Birch of Oni and Lurkin and Danny and Birch, their Ooh. favorite tag team. Uh, but I, I'm going to go with, uh, Are they two go with Keith Lee. One person? Four people? I don't, I don't know. Whatever the story needs. Man, I'm going to go with Keith Lee's boo because uh, Mia Yim actually got a win. And I, I don't know about you, Mike, but I never see her win. So... <laughs> it's too bad it happened against Indy Hartwell because uh, you'd like to see Indy Hartwell get some victories. Uh, but this, you know what? I, I'm happy BAM got the win. And um, what's funny is I was reading around online and, and uh, folks were saying what a surprise it was. Or what a lack, I'm sorry, what a lack of surprise it was for her to win because of course she was. Uh, but I, I'm still, like, I I went into that going, oh, of course Mia Yim's losing. We've got to build up Indy Hartwell. So, I, I mean, to me, this was the shocker of the night. Um, there was a fireball. There was a Velveteen Dream. But, no, Mia Yim getting the victory in what was ultimately a squash. Um, <laughs> that's what blew my mind. But, no, I, I'm happy that there's, there's somebody getting wins that was, again, in my mind, I think we put her on a pretty high pedestal, but I very rarely see her win. And uh, I, I don't think her record looks that shiny. Uh, from from those NXT Wednesday night shows. So uh, good for me and Yam to get back on the winning uh, side of things. But more importantly, I think this should define, again, let's go back to the graph. Uh, see, the graph shows you a tiny, a tiny bubble. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to explain that again. Uh, but that, I mean, that's just, again, I could have put any, I could rearrange those one, two, threes in any order. This was a rough watch on Wednesday night. So, Mike, you're, you're better show. Yeah, uh, just the before The show with Katie Omega I, happened to be better. Oh, what a shock. <laughs> Every time I read Indy Hartwell, 
I, I just love when a wrestler's name is their character. So she's like an indie wrestler, but like her heart's in the right place. You know, that's what I was going for. It just it also makes me think of uh, Caddyshack when there was Lacey Underalls. Um, but anyway, uh, Matt, the dishonorable mention of AEW, um, it would be the two-minute segment that we got. We're uh, Tag Team Appreciation Night and uh, Big Ladies Tournament right around the corner. Ladies were not featured. Matt, in a two-hour wrestling program, uh, Hikaru Shida got the only women's match. It was two minutes long. So I know it's only a two-hour show. I know. But I don't need to see Tony Schiavone saying, if you want to watch women's wrestling, we're going to have some goofy thing with a picture of a woman wearing heels. Because I think it's going to be called, like, heel drop or something. So now to watch women's wrestling, I have to turn on YouTube. And I I'm, our, I'm, I'm trying to help the numbers every week on Wednesdays. I'm trying to win this Wednesday Night War. I'm not w winning the YouTube war. Uh, so I just, I I don't know. I, I guess I got to make time for AEW Dark. And now if I want to watch the wrestle, I got to, I, I don't know, pay for YouTube Red or something. Stupid. You, you gave me a good idea. I'm actually, I'm going to, for our episode, I'm going to have a little speech bubble coming out of Randy's mouth. And it's going to say there's... <laughs> There's got to be a better way to do women's wrestling on on Wednesday nights. <laughs> no, it should say AEW. There is. Uh, but Matt, moment number one. It's It can only be one thing. It is the feud that doesn't need a championship, but we'll have one anyway. Matt, it's MJF and John Moxley. Um, we've talked a little bit about, you know, in the past couple episodes about, you know, uh, X. WWE guys, the ex-veterans, uh, you know, kind of helping out these younger guys, whether it's, you know, Jericho and Cassidy, what, you know, it's Matt Hardy and Sammy Guevara, or here, John Moxley and MJF. MJF just cuts a hell of a promo. Um, Moxley's music hits. MJF sends all his cronies up into the staircases because that's where Moxley usually, you know, erupts from, somewhere out in the crowd. But that sneaky old Moxley. Yo, he just did a traditional entrance. Oh, no! He just came down the <laughs> ramp and snuck up on MJF and pummeled him. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a success because of MJF's mic work. It's a success because of Moxley's, you know, commitment to violence. Um, and like I said, it's, it's a match that a title will be on the line. It's not going to matter. It's just that these two characters are so good. It's just, it, you know. It's one of those classic, you know, you want to see the, the Triceratops fight a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Like, it's that kind of, uh, you know, built up matchup in your head, and they're evenly matched. So you, you want to see that. You want to see it on TV. Um, and furthermore, you're, you're probably going to, you know, be happy putting money down on a pay-per-view to watch it. So uh, just a really good, really good segment, again, from MJF. Uh, He's also tying in, you know, what's coming in November with these presidential debates, MJF 2020. Um, yeah, he's a success. He is the winner this week for the Wednesday Night Wars. Well, I, I think even going over this, we like to kind of reassess. Um, I don't think I could go hard enough into the fact that I struggled to get through this episode of NXT. So I think the easy winner... Again, is AEW, they're winning the demos, they're winning the ratings, and they're winning in creative this week. Um, they just, uh, what sucks is that we still have complaints. <laughs> and, 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 like, the easy fix is to just kind of pivot away from old farts. Like, um, uh, Mike, Mike Kyoto, right? Yeah. He, he's, uh, he, he, he refs a match this week. Um, he actually did a four count in a match did you see that yeah, oh my god <laughs> that was that was ridiculous um four counts aside like the same amount of excitement for mike kyota should be the amount of anger that goes towards aew for not getting this women's division right and we are almost a year into watching TNT. Yeah, you, night. you know what? I didn't. I forgot to touch on it, but um, Hikaru Shida is the champion, so she gets the only segment. It's two minutes. It's not like it's almost worse for them to just put her on in a in a nothing squash because we're only a couple weeks away from like their next pay per view. 
I have no idea who she's going to fight because they haven't built up that story at all. So it's just it's just going to be an empty, hollow championship match. So you're, you're, you're setting her up for failure again because now there's no stakes because who's going to believe she's just going to lose the belt with no, no preamble, no story. She's just going to lose clean to somebody. It's just terrible. Well, uh, hopefully it gets better. Hopefully, uh, you know, hashtag AEW give women's wrestling a chance. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we come back every week because, you know, sometimes we see those baby steps and things getting better and, uh, you know, maybe we should hunker down and watch this Heels show. Um, but I just, I don't, I don't, as, as fun as it was to watch FTR beat up an old man, um, that could have been, you know, one of our women's tag yeah. team segments. Let's Build them up. All right. Um, Build them up. Everybody, check out BODpodcast.com, BrothersOfDiscussion.com. Please uh, subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts. And uh, subscribe on our YouTube channel. That is the Brothers of Discussion. And uh, enjoy all of our quality content going out there. You can also watch all the hockey podcasts on there. Find us on Instagram, Brothers underscore of underscore discussion. And on Anchor, we do have a link where you can help support the show. And for all the cool videos and graphics we're putting out there, that is going to help support um, the show. Uh, right now, that's that's what we're hoping for. So just a little support, it'll give back. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, quick shout out, Lady of a Thousand Holds. Uh, uh, that uh, Cody guy on Facebook. Chris B's been a monster. Amy D, always. We're you know, just naming the show after you. Uh, hope I'm not forgetting anybody. Uh, Andre, of course. Uh, anybody else, man? Hope we're not forgetting anybody. Doing good. Yeah, all right. See you guys next week. Bye.